don't have but uh, maybe seven short verses to read if you'd like to stand for it. If you handicap some way and you're not able, then you're okay to sit there. But if you'd like to stand for the reading of his word, it's found in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 through 10. It just simply says, first verse says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, second verse, uh, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, but for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am uh, a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. The, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have set thee this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and throw down, to build, and to plant. Hallelujah. What a powerful word where God was speaking to Jeremiah. Uh, you know, God promised victory. When he tells you to do anything, you know, we, we can sit back and say, well, I don't know if that's going to work. I don't know if that's uh, we can get that done, you know, we'll try it. I remember a few years ago, and it really got fought, but Tommy and I was sitting in the office, and I think it was about four years ago, but uh, we were sitting back there, and we were talking about being 40 years here, and almost 45 this year, be 45, so it was almost five years ago, but four years ago, but we talked about it, and I said, let's just have 40 days of revival. I mean, you know, people backslid, people had wrecks trying to get here, and everything that we could do to get it going was all we could do. Uh, but we made it through it, and, and people did get touched, and God uh, touched many people, and we thank Him for it. But that's the way we feel sometimes. When God tells you something that's a little outside of our norm or what we normally do, we think, well, we can't do that. We hadn't had 40 days in 10 years, you know? We're going to do it all in one year. If that's what God says, you got to do it. Like he said, Tommy and I felt good. We stayed faithful to it. People got blessed and touched. Didn't feel like it, it, it had the results it could have been if other folks had got on board with us, you know. But that's all right. And we'll answer to God for what we do. God promised victory, but he never said it would be easy. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of prayer. As the saints would just stretch their hand this way and ask for the anointing on my life and my my spirit and my body tonight, Lord, that I could preach what you've laid on my heart. And we give you all the praise and all the glory for it done right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shake hands, fellowship, whatever you'd like to do tonight. Amen. And then you can be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a mighty God we have tonight. Such a good God. <clears throat> I say it often, but give us so many blessings, undeserving. That's what we are. Amen. Uh, God promised victory. No matter how hard you have to find to get it, if you'll just be faithful, God promised that we could have victory tonight. I'm so glad for that tonight. I'm so thankful that God did promise us that victory. Amen. And if we would just be obedient to him, we could have it. I'll share with you what God laid on my heart today. I've studied this for the big part of the day. But verse number 8 said that there ought to be enough to keep us going, or verse number 8 ought to be enough to keep us going when things are tough. God spoke to him and said, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee. Amen. Just knowing that God is going to see us through ought to be enough. If God would tell you that, then you ought to be able to, 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 to stand alone if you have to. If God told you, be not afraid, I'll be with you. And that's what God told Jeremiah. And I feel like when we read that, it's God speaking it to us that he told us. So many good things. I looked up a lot of uh, messages on this, and you know what most of them talked about? And it's good scripture for that. They were preaching against abortion. 
Well, you, this is a good scripture to preach against abortion because if you look at the verse there, he said, Before uh, I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee before thou camest forth out of the womb. I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. You know, I'm sure there were people that God probably intended to do great works for over the years been aborted. Uh, you know, probably been some of everything aborted presidents and preachers and pastors and, you know, we don't know what you're doing, but God knows them before they're in the womb. And so he did, and I'll pass on that to you and just keep going. But I understood why they did. At first I thought, why are they preaching on abortion? That's not what I'm preaching on. And I realized what they was preaching was from that verse there where he said, before I formed you in the belly, before you was in the womb, you know, I knew you and I had a work for you. Uh, so that ought to be enough to give us a little excitement about God had a plan for our life. Amen. Uh, you're not a Jeremiah and I'm not either. But we were still an individual before the Lord. And I'm one thing I can tell you that no matter what level you own, you were born to serve the Lord. You were born to do something for Him. If you're not doing anything for Him, you're not fulfilling what He had in mind for you when He saw you in the womb and before He formed you in the belly tonight. When the call of God is revealed in our life, uh, from this scripture of Jeremiah, we must realize that the call on our life has always been there. If God calls us, you say, well, I, I don't agree with that. Well, uh, I, I just think it's right. Before you were born, before you came out of the womb, I sanctified you. I ordained you. Amen. Uh, we just didn't know it until now. You didn't know it until you got to the place that you could surrender to the call. Some preachers that get called when they're in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, you know, I've heard Jimmy Swagger so many times say that God called him to preach when he was eight. But I thank God, and I got called when I was in my 20s, but I think if I'd have been more obedient to God, I could have been a teenage preacher. Somebody hear me tonight. We, we never know if the call's there. It's when we get ourselves to recognize it and realize it and not let man talk us out of it. We just didn't know it until God speaks to us and says, now's the time like he did me one Saturday night. All, all throughout the scriptures, we see God calling men and women, you know, uh, to the work and to the kingdom of God. And that's what he did with Jeremiah. I'm not going to talk too much about all the people he called. I'll just touch on it a little bit and keep going and try not to hold you too long, but try to obey the Lord. But some of those he called uh, to do great things, and some of them had great jobs, and some of them were just cup bears and someone some of them just worked in the uh, you know the candle bears and stuff and did the work in the kingdom of god but they all had a place and they all had to be faithful to god amen and i i think if we would get more serious about god god give us more to do i remember and I, i'll just share this i don't know if i've ever have i don't remember doing it in a long time but when god called me to preach you know i remember i was a sunday school teacher and i wouldn't give uh, two minutes to teach in that Sunday school to last study time, maybe a little more than that, but not much more than that. Teach those young people, and they'd tell me what a good job I'd done, and and uh, you know they'd tell me this. And I there was two or three young men there in the church that God called them to preach, and I said, God, won't you call me to preach? You know, I like to preach. You know, I I, I, I didn't see the, the 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 if there is a downside, I didn't see the things that Jeremiah saw in the ministry that he had. Uh, but I just wanted to, you know, be like those other young men. I want you to call me to preach, you know. But he didn't until I was in my 20s. But I won't ever forget what he spoke to me one night. He said, when you do what I've already given you to do with all that you got to do it with, I'll give you something better. And until you do, you're never going to get it. Amen. God, you know, if you worked in a plan, I've been a supervisor in the textile industry. I've been a supervisor and a manager in the car business for years. And I can tell you that you never promote nobody that's not doing what they're doing with all that's within them. If they're not doing a good job what they're doing, you're not going to give them more responsibility. Somebody hear me. And God's not going to do that because if you don't do it with all your heart, the Bible said that's the second commandment, that you love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your body, everything that's within you. If you're not going to do it with all that's within you, you'll do more damage than you do good out there. Amen. Somebody hear me. People that don't do their 
job well, whether they're truck drivers or whether they work in an office or whether they work in a bank. I mean, you know, uh, money will get missing in banks if you don't do your job to good as, as best you can. Have a wreck, kill somebody if you don't drive a truck right. You know, every, every one of them has, I can tell you about that. You're going to get somebody hurt if you're just sweeping or something for a company. You know, you, 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 you don't do a good job on that. You can get somebody to fall and slide on something, you know. I mean, every job has a, has a mark that you need to get to, and, and certainly in the calling of God. And that's just a little bit on that. Uh, some of those called in the Bible included God himself being very personal with people. He, he was doing the Father's will. He had to do what he had to do. Uh, you know, he was the Son of God. He didn't have to deal with what we do, but the Bible says that he in all points was tempted like we are. Amen. So he, he did. Uh, the man, that Jesus, that come here on this earth, it is God who calls us, and it's his purpose to feel, fulfill a certain place, whether you Mordecai out at the gate or whether you Esther in the kingdom. It don't matter. God has a place for you, and you need to find that place. Amen. Such was the calling of Abraham when God called him. Such was the calling of Moses when God appeared to him in the burning bush. We preached that lately. Uh, the calling of Joshua by uh, said, "My Moses, my servant is dead." Had a different way to call every one of them. Uh, the calling of Isaiah, who who God spoke to him. He said, "Who will go for us? And who shall we send?" And and he and uh, you know he couldn't do it because he was unclean. But when he got clean, God used him. Uh, the calling of Isaiah, uh, the call of Gideon, Samuel, David, Jonah disciples such was the calling of isaiah with his vision uh, of the glory of god in the temple such as was paul's encounter we preached about him lately on the damascus road uh, tonight the call of jeremiah the great man of god who became known as the weeping prophet that done such a good job but didn't get a lot of recognition by men amen didn't get a lot of recognition by those that in fact, I, I can tell you in, in the scripture that I read here, and, and I can turn over in the 20th chapter, and if you want to turn to that, I don't have it on the board. You could look at that with me in just a moment when I get there. But the call on God or to, uh, from God on Jeremiah's uh, life can be seen in three different phases, three different things that I point out about the call of God. First, the call of God in verse 4 and 5. And then I see that God speaks to Jeremiah in verse 7. And then I see in verses 9 and 10 that God touches Jeremiah. I mean, it's a progression, you know. It's a progression to walk with God. Don't, 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 don't stand in the way of sinners. Don't, don't really talk to them. Don't, don't take their counsel. Don't stand with them. Don't sit with them. You know, it goes from just a little bit to worse and, it's the same way in reverse with God. You just keep on climbing up the higher mountain. There used to be a song about that. I think the Kingsman said you just pass different places. You go out, you have to get there. The call of God. You don't do nothing about it. That's probably all you're going to get. Maybe the judgment of God to fall on you for not doing it. But as far as God, God, I, you know, begging you to do it, if you're waiting for him to beg you to do something, I told you before when God something lays something on my heart to do, and, and I, you know, most people just talk to God. I've heard people say, I've been praying about doing that for two years. Well, you know, I can't do that because every time God speaks to me about doing something, if I don't do it, he don't talk to me no more about it, you know. I mean, I just got to do it when he speaks to me. I got to take that call, amen. Uh, but he spoke to Jeremiah, and he touched Jeremiah. There were times when Jeremiah felt like giving up, and no doubt we know about it by what he said. At times, he felt like that. At times, Jeremiah tried to hold back from his prophetic proclamation. He knew they weren't going to listen to it. He, had, he After a while, he got the idea, y'all not going to hear what I'm preaching to you tonight. You're not going to hear. So he almost probably tried to hold back, and I think from his words, maybe he did. But he found that the word of the Lord was like a burning fire set up in his bones. Amen. Uh, chapter 20, verse 7 through 11. Let me read that portion with you. If you'd like to look at it, you can. Chapter 20, uh, Jeremiah 
7 through 11. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. Amen. Listen to this. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and, der and derision daily. Then I said, I will make mention of him. I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bone. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Just couldn't do it anymore. For I heard the defaming of many. I've heard people talking about me behind my back. Heard about people talking about some of my family members. Heard of people running me down. Hey, Amen. You know what he's saying. You have to read a little more into it. There's more there. He said fear on every side. I heard, and you know you can take what you want to this, but he said report, say they. We will report it. We're going to tell on you. We're going to tell the police on you. We're going to get somebody involved in this. We're going to tell somebody about it. And then he said, all my familiars. And I started to say his friends. I don't think he had no friend. I think he was just saying all my familiars, people that know me, people that walk down the street know me before I ever started preaching, people that just like that today in my life and your life. So he said, all my familiars. Watch for my halting, saying they wanted me to fall. They didn't think I was going to make it. Amen. People that I'd labored with, worked with, lived beside of, worked on cars with, washed their cars with, all just familiars. People that I knew wasn't the people that I, you know, uh, go home with me because they won't come home with me because of what I teach and what I preach. Somebody hear me tonight. But he said they're talking about me and they're sitting back waiting for me to fail saying, peradventure, he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. He got a price. We can get him down from where he's at. We can get him to quit preaching. We can get him to quit talking about the judgment of God and things of God, and we'll just do that. Amen. And then we'll take our revenge on him. But the word is with me. But the Lord is with me as a mighty terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall greatly be ashamed. They shall be greatly ashamed. Uh, same thing. For they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. Sometimes when we complain, God does not even seem to listen to us. I think God just probably, you know, uh, you know, I, I don't think he turned his back on him. He just had to let him work it out in his own heart. You know, God doesn't say that God right then said anything back to him. It said he said, but God is a mighty one. God is a great one. He talked himself out of quitting. I mean, God could have done it. God loved him enough. And it wasn't God just ignoring him. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying tonight. God was not just ignoring him. God was letting him listen to himself. Sometimes you have to listen to yourself. You know, somebody hear me tonight. Sometimes you have to listen to yourself, James Chambers. That ain't what you said. That is what you said, whatever the case might be. We complain. God doesn't even seem to listen. Sometimes we have to answer our own complaint, as Jeremiah did. He spoke to God saying, you have deceived me. I was deceived. I was in derision daily everybody was mocking me that's what he said i cried in to i cried out spoil and violence because that's what god kept tempting to tell him is like that man in the bible Micaiah, that he said don't prophesy nothing but bad stuff you know not gonna call him they wouldn't call him to at one of their parties to to to, to give a, a word because everything he talked about was spoil and violence that's what he said he said i did that the word of the Lord was made a reproach to me. It made people walk on the other side of the street when they saw me coming. It, it made people turn their heads when I come up. Oh, Lord, there's that preacher again, you know. It made people walk another way, you know. I mean, I, I, God, God 
taught me a good lesson in that not too long ago. And I can't tell you because uh, it hurt somebody's feelings. But there was somebody that had never, had had never really, you know, uh, you know, just just one of them people you don't like to be around. And uh, you know, I I pulled up at a place and I saw him, and I thought, well, I'm gonna walk down the side here, and I opened my door, and one of the other family members said, "Hey, preacher, how you doing?" I said, all right, Lord, I can't do that, you know. But, you know, and I'm a Christian. So you think about how many in the world does that. I mean, it wasn't that I didn't care about them people. It wasn't that I didn't love them people. But, you know, they know how I feel. You know, they know I've taught them before and I've, I've preached to them. They know. Amen. But, you know, I, I don't know what to do to change them, you know. And uh, you just have to keep on going. But I'm telling you, you know, God taught me that lesson. I shouldn't have told you that. I hope I didn't hurt nobody's feelings, but I'm just telling you today that I'm not perfect either. Sometimes, you know, and, and, and if we're like that, think about a lost, dying world on their way to hell. They're not going to think much of you if you lift the name of Jesus high. Somebody hear me. They're not going to think much of you if you just walk for Jesus and talk for Jesus and everything you do is Jesus. Uh, uh, Gail was kidding with me i'm sure but it had a good point i said something to her about it and she had a little bitty uh miniature jesus she said don't mess with me i got jesus well that's the way it ought to be about all of it don't mess with me i got jesus that's about what you said i might have twisted that around a little bit don't mess with me i got jesus amen and after a while the word would, word would get out that that's a jesus man or a jesus woman and you don't want to and, uh, you know, so after a while, Jeremiah just come to that conclusion himself. Amen. Uh, he cried spoil and violence. Uh, he was weary of forbearing. I'm tired of doing this over and over and over again. I, I, I told you that Brother Chamley told us one time when he was here, you heard it most of you did, but I've repeated it a couple of times. He said one time his youth pastor walked up to him and said, uh, Pastor, I got something to ask you. And he said, what is it? He said, you ever feel like quitting? And he said, you mean between Sunday morning and Sunday night? He said, yeah, I feel like it. Yeah, sometimes I feel like throwing in the towel. He said, but you can't. He said, well, I don't like everybody hating me and being mad at me all the time. He said, well, you're in the wrong place. He said, you can't preach and get everybody to love you. Amen. Because you're going to have to preach hard sometimes. I, my church knows me. I try to preach encouraging messages when God allows me to, and I do. And this ought to encourage you tonight to keep going because he'll be with you. What's the title of the message? God promised vis victory, but he never said it'd be easy. And so if God's got you doing something, it don't just, don't just, you're not just breezing through it and just hanging there because God promised victory. He never said it would be easy. Amen. Uh, I, I cried out in spoil and violence. Send something on the inside. Happened to me. Happened to me. He said, I heard all the people talking behind my back. Amen. I mean, you know, you can you can join up with them if you want to. There's a gospel song that said, come on over to the winning side. And the devil wants you to come on over to the losing side. And you can if you want to. He said, I heard people talking behind my back, running me down, running my family down. I saw fear on every side. I mean, you know, just things to make me fearful and afraid. I heard people say, we're going to turn him in. We're going to report him. We're going to call the law on him. We're going to shut that church down. We're going to shut that ministry down. That's the kind I'm relating this to our day today. Amen. It wasn't like that back then. But he said, I heard them saying they was going to report it. And I watched all those who knew me looking to see if I would quit during all this against me, uh, they seemed to think I would, amen, that I'd quit. Uh, I would be enticed and give in to fear. I mean, you know, when you got saved, there's probably people that said, we'll see how long that lasts, amen. But we got some 30 years, 20 years, 10 years, 15 years. Don't have a lot of people, but we got faithful people that's, that, that hadn't quit when the battle got hot. Somebody hear me tonight. And that's the way we got to be. I just believe that with all my heart. And he began to say these things. And, and, and then he answers his own question. The Lord is with me. He is the mighty one. 
Therefore, my enemies will stumble, and they will not prevail. Their everlasting confusion will never be forgotten. In verse 8 of our text, he saw the commitment of God, his promise, his vow, his pledge, his oath, his assurance, his binder, his obligation. God's commitment is to be with him and to be with me and you tonight. Hallelujah. The words to say uh, 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 and, and uh, to give him words to say. And he said he would do that. I can't do it. I'll put the words in your mouth. Amen. Today hasn't he said that I will go with us until the end of me and you, that he never leave us, never forsake us, go with us all the way. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God said to Jeremiah and us, I will, and I have given you words to say. Don't be afraid of their faces. I'm with thee, he said, to deliver thee. When we've all we've all heard the saying, if if looks could kill, we'd all be dead. Amen. Jeremiah was looking at them, and Jesus knew, God knew he'd be looking at them. He said, don't let their faces scare you. He said, they can't do nothing to you that I don't allow them to do to you. Don't, don't let them scare you. Amen. Now, fear's a, a motivator to, to, to quit. That's what it is, and that's what the devil tries to give you. He said, don't let it. Uh, don't let their faces kill you. They're not going to shoot you with their mouth. They might try it, but they're not going to get it done. Amen. Amen. Their eyes is not going to send beams like you see on TV from the outer space and, and, and do things awful to you. It's not going to happen. He said, don't let it scare you. Don't let it scare you. Amen. God will never tell you uh, to go where his grace can't keep you. But you must also be committed to God like Elijah was to Elijah. He was called one day when Elijah just passed by on, on route to Damascus and threw his mantle on him. He was immediately called to the ministry, slaughtered his own oxen, prepared a meal, kissed his family goodbye, and followed the call of God on his life. Nobody ever told him it'd be easy. God didn't make him no promise it'd be easy. Amen. We just got to keep going. I'm, I'm telling you, none of the disciples found out. All of them could have said what Jeremiah said, you never told us about this. We never experienced this. But when Jesus is here walking, they couldn't tell him that because he said, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Amen. So they couldn't tell him that. Amen. But, but they probably did. Some of them did. You know, when he went to heaven, I could talk about some of them. Potter went, when he went back to heaven, uh, Peter, who'd done such a mighty work on the day of Pentecost, had to repent of it. Now, he went fishing and a bunch of the others went with him. Tax collectors and doctors that probably didn't even know how to fish. But they went fishing with him, amen. And because he asked them to. It's easy to turn tail and run. Somebody hear me tonight. Amen. He he was immediately called to the ministry, slaughtered his oxen, did what he knew to do. Uh, we just voted our, our new pastor in at Dallas Church last night, his first church. Uh, he has been an assistant, an associate, but this is all his. I mean, this we put this in his hands with God's help tonight. And uh, he he was on a high. He he really was he was walking on the clouds. I mean, he, he's just so excited. And it, and I went back to uh, 1979 when I came out here, and they asked me to be their pastor. Amen. I mean, you couldn't get me down. I'm the pastor of Souls Harbor Tabernacle. In Gastonia, amen. And I didn't know about all that was going to come my way in 45 years, amen. You say, you throw in the towel in. You give in, you give in place to the devil. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you to, to brace up when you start to do something for God because when God tells you to do something, you say, you ain't got no scripture for that. Paul said, every time I do good, evil would be present. You do have scriptures for it. You are not going to do it without the devil trying to stop you. And I, I'm sure Brother James over there knows that. But I'm just telling you, I, you know, I, I had one thing on my side in 1979 that he and I need one know how to. Today, he's a lot younger than me, but well, I was 27 years old. I had youth on my side. I could have stayed up all night. I could have done what I needed to do 
to run this race. I don't have it anymore, but I still can't quit. Amen. And, uh, you know, he's where I was. He's about the age I was when I started a TV ministry 23 years ago or so. And I'm telling you, I, I, drive, every, I drive every Saturday night to Hickory, drive up there, and come home, get in the bed at 12 o'clock, get up at 6 o'clock and study, and get ready to go to church the next morning. And, I mean, I did it. I, my body, without a touch from God, I could not do that. I, I, God sees like he did Joshua, that you're old and stricken in years. But he told Joshua there's still much land to be possessed. So I still got a work to do for him. I'm about through. I'm not just trying to add to this tonight. I'm trying to obey the Lord tonight. Pray for me. Hallelujah. But disappointments will come no matter what you've got in your life. Amen. So the Bible said, uh, the writer said, Think it not strange that all the trials, the fiery trials, that are come to, going to come against you to try to get you out. And if you get up there where you said, Nobody can touch me, you can be indispensable with God, but without him you can't be. And the devil will be shooting at you all the time, trying to take you out. His familiars, the people that knew him, people that could wave at him going down the street was against him. Amen. Amen. So many men in life, and even some in the Bible were so disappointed when men came against them. They just didn't understand why they're doing this to me, and I don't understand it today. Amen. Somebody hear me today. When you're doing the mighty will of God, amen, hear me. One thing Jeremiah had to remember, and we must remember too, when he was saying that he was deceived, that God had deceived him, we all have to remember that man is the one that deceives us, not God. Uh, man is the one that tries to make us think God deceived us. But God is the, not the one that deceives you. Amen. I can promise you. And he had to realize that. And that's probably why he kept on going. Amen. He knew. Amen. He knew. He knew. He knew. Amen. One thing Jeremiah had to remember was that men did it, not God. Uh, we all have to remember that man is the one that's against us, not God. To the contrary, the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? But it does not stop men from trying, and sometimes even momentarily it seems like they're winning. Elijah was so disappointed he prayed to die. Uh, Peter was so disappointed he went fishing. Amen. Uh, Aaron was so disappointed to find out that uh, Moses had left in over a month or whatever and didn't know where he was at. He let the people talk him into getting into idolatry. I touched on that the other night. Won't spend no more time there. Sometimes when we realize what Jesus went through for us, we should just ask ourselves, what did we expect when we accepted the call of God on our life? I mean, when we stepped over in this, you get in a boxing ring and put gloves on, somebody's going to knock your eyes out if you ain't careful. Somebody hear me tonight. And you get out there in the arena for the Lord, the devil's going to do everything he can to stop you. You just have to keep telling the devil, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And that's you. Amen. I'm going to win this race. We should have known the devil was going to come after us like you did, Jeremiah. And every man of God, whatever and whoever, uh, uh, stepped in to the gospel ministry and you're doing that if you don't ever accept a call to preach you're doing that just living on the lord's side tonight paul spent most of his ministry in jail if for one minute you think that men and women in the bible did not suffer for the stand they took for god you just need to read hebrews chapter 11 over and over and over again what it says all of them went through amen then you will see that we must be willing to suffer the reproach as a Christian. Like Moses said, he did then. He had rather do that than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. I'm closing. Let me just share the words of a song. I thought I had it with me. I might not even have it with me. I might have just laid it aside somewhere. But I was thinking about the song that, that says, and I, I'm, I'm sure I had it. Maybe I just put it in the wrong place here. Let me look a minute. I'm just going to share some of those words with you tonight. 
But uh, the song I want to share with you tonight, I had the road words wrote down. I don't know what I've done with them, but that's all right. But I had the words to the song where he says that, uh, you know, that I've been young and never seen the righteous forsaken. And it talks about things in that song that I, I just read over my mind today. Have you ever been lonely? Have you ever been hurting? Have you ever been sad? All of us have. Amen. All of us have been there. And I was going to share some of those words. That's all right. I, I'll probably find them in a moment. But, uh, you know, maybe I was going to take too much time with that. But let me tell you in closing, God is still calling people today. He is still commissioning people. And he's telling you that greater is he that's in you than he's in the world. He's telling you that he's never seen the righteous forsaken or God's begging for bread. That's why Brother Wilson loves that song. I got so much to thank him for because we do. Amen. We have so much to thank him for tonight. Amen. I read a quote today from C.S. Lewis. He said, he who has God and many other things has no more than he who has God alone. You hear that? Isn't that a good quote? Amen. He who has God and many other things has no more than he who has God alone. That's all you got. When he's all that you got, he's all that you need. When you have nothing left but God, then you can be, become aware of that, that God is enough. I heard them quoting the song over here tonight. I got Jesus based on uh, what Gail told us about her Jesus. You got Jesus. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. And I believe that tonight. Stand to your feet. I'm through.